Hello everyone, my name is Sarah Warren, Towson University sophomore, 19 years old, and this is my second video about philosophy and music. My next video is about synchronized chaos and networking in comparison to playing the piano. All of my information is based upon exploring sync documents, chapter 8 and 9, provided on my school's blackboard by my professor. On page 181 it states, the mathematician Stanis Ulam once said that calling a problem nonlinear is like going to the zoo and talking about all the interesting non-elephant animals you see there. This is like saying, I enjoy playing all the non-white keys on my piano. In this book, the author discusses Jeff Goldblum playing a chaos theorist in the movie Jurassic Park, describing the butterfly effect to Laura Dern. In other words, butterfly effect is the action of any small happening can make a huge effect in the long-term future. For example, I could decide to play minor chords on my piano today, and later on tonight I might just be sad all day. And I won't know why, but it could have been because of the minor chords. Or, I could play a bunch of major chords and change the complete opposite feeling, and be happy the rest of the day. As continuing in this book, writer also discusses the term of rhythmicity, which means something repeated regularly in time intervals, while the term sync means two things happening simultaneously. This is a perfect example for piano playing. The way I understand this in terms of piano is that I could play with both hands at the same time, then switch to different time signatures in each hand, such as playing a count of three beats in one and two in the other. This will be three. This will be two. With computers, the possibility of different variables are endless. When playing piano, there are many ways to play chords. I could choose to repeat certain ones, but there may be different ways to play them all. For example, I could play C, Bit. I can play C, then E, and then G. This is a one chord. This is my first chord, and I can move in different positions from wherever I'd like on the piano. There's 88 keys on this piano. And it just all depends on my choice or whether it's written in the music. You could go from... When discussing the contrast of chaos, chaotic systems excuse me, and rhythmic systems, this is just like using a metronome. Sadly, I do not have a metronome to show you as an example, but as a benefit, the book did mention this as an example. Um, so the ticking of a metronome might be off at first, but it will remain constant further on the entire time until you turn it off or you tap the top and it stops. Synchronized chaos does not does exist in the world of music. For example, I could pay, play sporadic rhythms or notes, and they sound cool but nonsense-like to you, but to me, I know I'm playing correctly and playing in the proper key signature and the proper time signature. Got some little bit of thing in there. Play different kinds of scales. Anything like that, obviously. In the sense of figuring out how to control these chaos through circuits in order to, for example, eavesdrop, you try separating the levels of sound to hear certain parts and mute others. This reminded me of the use of pedals, which are located at the bottom of this piano. I'm not sure if you can see these or not. You can see my foot tapping on that. Those are the pedals. I want to break my laptop. But uh, the right pedal, the very far right pedal, will hold all of the notes you play and make them echo. While holding the middle pedal will hold the single first note that's played. 
interconnected in our lives, whether it's literally by the people around us or the technology we so very much praise in our high-tech society. Each note on the piano is related, whether it's because of a chord or a scale. Or an interval. Or playing a canon. simply playing one thing and then repeating it in the next. You get the point. <laughs> but um, I don't have any clear examples to give you today. But the most obvious comparison in music itself is that music is such a huge part of our culture and always has been. Music constantly brings us together, whether you like country or rock music or classical or fiddling around the piano and playing Rome scales for your YouTube audience. It all brings us together because it's been a part of our lives as long as we know. Well, that's it for today, everyone. My name is Sarah Warren, and this is me signing out on Philosophy and Music.